Hey guys, I finally decided to do it. I bought the Wi-Fi Pineapple Mark 7. Just a little background for you guys. I bought the Wi-Fi Pineapple Nano in 2018. This is the Mark IV version. And as you can see, it's coming apart. I have done three war driving episodes with this Pineapple Nano. The antenna covers are coming off and you can see it's bare. Uh, I don't even know what that is, but the antennas are bare and naked to the eye and uh, it's definitely seen better days. So I've had my eye on the Wi-Fi Pineapple for a while now and I finally got it. When you're ordering the Mark 7, there's two different types that you can get. The first one is just the regular basic Wi-Fi Pineapple. And then the second is the Mark 7 and AC Tactical. For those of you that don't know, AC is short for 802.11 AC, which is a wireless protocol from 2014. I actually have with me the original Hack 5 book written by Darren Kitchen on how to set up your Wi-Fi Pineapple. This came with my Pineapple Nano when I first got it in 2018, which means that it's held up for about four years. It has loads of notes and this one was actually around 10 bucks, I think. The one they have now is actually a free ebook they can get online. There are several Wi-Fi protocols known by their letter designated IEEE 802.11 specifications, such as 802.11a, 802.11b, 802.11g and 802.11n. Generally, their differences are related to frequency, aka band or spectrum, data rate, aka throughput or transfer speed, bandwidth, modulation, and range. That is straight out of the Hack 5 Wi-Fi auditing guide written by Darren Kitchen. So what does the Wi-Fi Pineapple do? Well, it's a versatile Linux-based wireless auditing platform in development since 2008. It does many things. That said, it is best known for its ability to passively gather intelligence, target and track Wi-Fi enabled devices, and effectively deploy a rogue access point or man in the middle attacks. As more organizations embrace bring your own device policies, endless possibilities emerge for the penetration tester. Focus shifts from breaking into the network to becoming the network. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the goodies. I got the tactical package, so we're gonna look at that right now. Here we have the Mark 7 itself. The specifications include an IEEE 802.11 B, G, and N protocol, an ethernet over USB, USB 2.0 host wireless access point interface, a reverse polarity SMA antenna, RGB status LED configurable button, USB 5 volt 2 amp for power. The dimensions are 107 by 93 by 21 millimeters. And the default frequency is 2.4 gigahertz. Let's go open it up. Oh my. This is the first time I've seen one of these bad boys in real life. Looks like we have a small card with instructions. Save that for later. As you can see, we have our three reverse polarity connectors designed and built for a strong connection. So inside the box, you're gonna find your Wi-Fi Pineapple Mark 7, three RP SMA antennas. We'll open these up and screw them on. Reverse polarity, so we have the male end here, the female end here. And just screw it on. Make sure the thread's connected. And then once you get it on, you're able to move this in three different angle degrees, 90, 45, 180. These are pretty big antennas, guys. Now, a little history. SMA stands for Sub Miniature Version A. It was a coax connector that came out in the 60s. It provides good electrical shielding because the connector is robust and screwable. In addition to cool Wi-Fi auditing tools, it's also found in things like microwaves, portable radios, and cell phone antennas. When talking about the RP SMA antennas, the RP means reverse polarity or reverse connector type. Overall, it's a solid connection for doing some Wi-Fi scanning. Also included is the USB-C cable. Take that apart. So the USB-C would just connect to the USB-C and then we also have uh, the reset button here and a USB-A on the bottom, you'll find details like serial number and MAC address, and also the country of origin, our DC input, which is five volts and two amps, and our FCC ID. This thing is really not all that much heavier than the Nano. I'd say the biggest weight factor are these three antennas here, which as you can see with the Nano, much smaller. So it's pretty lightweight, and as in the description, feels tactical. 
I'm excited to check out the new interactive recon dashboard. Mark 7 automates Wi-Fi auditing, get actionable results from vulnerability assessment reports. It's got the leading rogue access point suite so they can pull out some advanced man in the middle attacks. You got next gen network processors, multiple role based radios, and of course the Hack5 patented Pine AP suite. This thing's been stress tested so when you go out and do your Wi Fi audit, you can be sure that it won't explode. Now let's check out some of those accessories. Now, because the Wi Fi Pineapple Tactical is so popular, they are sold out of the Kismet case mod and the Kismet Tactical case. But if you have a friend who has a 3D printer, you might be able to make your own cool case. I got the Kismet LED module, which was 20 bucks. So that way, if I ever build a case, I'll have a cool LED fixture that'll light up with some pretty colors. We also have these. These are three DBI Wi-Fi antenna. So we just open this up. And this just offers a more covert way to have an antenna. So as you can tell, there's quite a difference in size there. And once you have them all screwed in, they will get the job done. However, for more long range engagements, you're gonna wanna use these long range antennas. After all, these antennas should be more than plenty. Also, we have this Hack5 carry case, which looks like it'll do the job. And for when you're not undercover, we have this bright red keychain from Hack5, which says, trust your Technolust on one side, and remove before flight. For those of you that are wondering, because I was too, remove before flight is part of a safety checklist of an aircraft maintenance. It simply means you need to remove the component, whether it's a cover or a pin, to prevent movement of the mechanical part in the air. In other words, when you boot up this pineapple, it's ready for blast off. You can see that it has an outside zipper here with ample space, probably big enough to fit an antenna which it is, so it can fit the Wi-Fi pineapple deconstructed, but certainly not with the antennas still in place. Inside, we can see that there is a whole bunch of different pockets and sleeves for your personal use. Up top here might be good for putting an antenna in. Looks like we have two sleeves here, two sleeves here, pocket right there. And for size comparison, there's the Wi-Fi pineapple. You can put your USB-C cable in one of these pockets here. And in this small pocket, you may be able to fit the Wi-Fi pineapple. Looks like it's a little too small to fit that. Here we have a secret pocket and it's pretty big. But unfortunately, if you try to put the pineapple in, it's just a little too big for it to completely squeeze in. So if you plan on taking your Wi-Fi pineapple in the case, you use the outside pocket like this which just barely fits, or just go ahead and put it inside. You can even fit the pineapple in with one antenna already installed. You can also fit the Wi-Fi pineapple nano in here if you happen to have one. While the main storage space may be good for the Wi-Fi pineapple, these smaller pockets might be more suitable for the Wi-Fi pineapple nano. There you go. I ordered the Mark 7 AC Wi-Fi adapter, but I guess it already came with one, so now I have two. USB 3.0 the adapter itself, and a card for instructions. This is where the USB would go, two antennas, and there you go. The Mark 7 AC by Hack5 is an 802.11 AC Wi-Fi adapter compatible with the Wi-Fi Pineapple Mark 7 and many Linux pen testing tools for broad spectrum Wi-Fi monitoring and auditing. Standards IEEE 802.11 Wi-Fi 5. A, B, G, N, and AC. Wi-Fi frequency, 2.4 gigahertz and five gigahertz. Data throughput, 866 megabits per second. Wi-Fi adapter includes USB-C to USB-A 3.0 adapter. Dimensions 33 by 44 by 20 millimeters. Each adapter comes with two antennas that are high gain reverse polarity SMA. And for a little comparison, we can see the Wi-Fi Pineapple Nano adapter, which is right here, and the Wi-Fi Pineapple Mark 7 adapter that comes with the technical kit. As you can see, this only has the protocol 802.11n whereas this one comes with multiple protocols. And it would just go into the Wi-Fi pineapple either through the USB-A or USB-C, like so. How's that for a size comparison? And don't forget about stickers. Here we have two little Mark 7 stickers, the Wi-Fi pineapple logo, and the OG Hack 5 logo. I used to worry about these things because I thought I might blow my cover. Trust me, it won't. The only people who will know are other Hack 5 enthusiasts. Here's a pretty nice sticker. And as you can see, there's a little cutout for the LED. And there we go. Not too bad. Okay, so first things first, go ahead and get on a computer, laptop, whatever you've got. Go ahead and grab the instructions. Get your pineapple. So if you got a charger for an Android device, that should work just fine. As long as it's a USB-C or a USB-A, go ahead and plug that in. You should see that the blue light is now a steady hue 
with just the occasional blink, which means it's moved on to the next step. It is now searching for any sort of wireless connections. So before you do anything, you're gonna to wanna to go to the Hack5 website. A link to download the firmware file will be in the description of this video and download the latest firmware for your Wi-Fi pineapple. If we go to the Hack5 download center, we should be able to see this Wi-Fi pineapple Mark 7 firmware. Go ahead and click it and download the latest firmware, which as of this date is the 1.1.1 stable version. Go ahead and find the Wi-Fi Pineapple Wi-Fi network. If you scroll through your wireless networks, you should see one that says pineapple and then an underscore with some different characters. Go ahead and click connect. As you start to connect, you're gonna see the Wi-Fi Pineapple will start blinking more rapidly, which indicates a successful connection. Once you see that you have no internet, but it's connected, go ahead and open up a new internet tab and type in the address HTTP colon slash slash 172.16.42.1 colon 1471, which means port 1471 and click enter. You'll now be greeted by a screen with instructions. If you're doing this in a private setting like your house, you should be able to hold down the button for four seconds, which is going to use the Wi-Fi access point in order to do the next step. If you hit refresh and see that the connection is timed out, go ahead and unplug that Wi-Fi pineapple and plug it back in and still you start to see the regular blinking patterns. Make sure you connect back to the Wi-Fi Pineapple Wi-Fi, go to the address, go ahead and click refresh. However, because mine's not showing up, we're gonna go ahead and try the ethernet adapter. Now you're gonna get more reliable results if you use some kind of wired connection. In this case, if you have a USB to ethernet adapter, that's gonna work great. Or if you can tether it to your laptop through a USB connection. To do this, you're gonna take an ethernet that's coming from your router or home Wi-Fi. You are then going to plug it into the ethernet adapter, which is gonna go to the USB. Take your pineapple and go ahead and stick the USB into the USB-A slot. You should see a positive connection indicated by a blinking green light. Now that it's connected, let's go ahead and see what it looks like on the laptop. We're gonna choose USB Ethernet adapter. And for me guys, it looks like it did not work, so it looks like you need to have an official Hack5 Ethernet adapter. Go ahead and click the reset button and you can hold it down for four seconds. One, two, three, four, release and you should see your screen change to download the latest firmware. It will ask you to download the latest firmware for your Wi-Fi Pineapple. Select the Wi-Fi network from the list below and it'll automatically download the firmware. If all you're seeing is hidden networks, you may need to go to your router. Go ahead, look on the router to see if you can find a MAC address and match that up with what you see here. Alternatively, you can upload a firmware file um, if you've downloaded that previously. If we go to download, we should see our 1.1.1 version. Go ahead and click open, upload, and you should see your screen change to say verifying firmware. The uploaded firmware is being verified. Please wait until the verification is complete. Your device will automatically reboot during the update process. Please do not power off your device. During this time, you should see your Wi-Fi pineapple flashing blue and red. That just means it's in the process of updating the firmware. After your pineapple has rebooted, you will start to see a slower flash and is just blue. As we can see by the LED indicators, a flashing blue means that it's starting up. Alternating red and blue indicates that it's flashing the firmware. A solid red indicates that there's invalid USB files. It should take a few minutes before we see the solid blue indicating that it is ready to go. And there we go. We're gonna go ahead and jump back onto our laptop. So once you see the blue light, you may have to check and make sure that your laptop is not connected to your regular Wi-Fi and connect back to the pineapple and go back to the address and you should see a welcome screen. Go ahead and click begin setup. And you're gonna hold the Wi-Fi pineapple button for four seconds, four. And you should see continue with radios enabled, accept. Welcome to the Wi-Fi pineapple mark seven version 1.1.1 firmware. This supplemental update to the 1.1.0 release provides post-release fixes and improvements. Go ahead and click continue. Now you're gonna set up a root password. Go ahead and pick something that you're not gonna forget, but that's not too easy to break into. You pick a strong password, go ahead and choose your time zone and hit next. For networking setup, you can actually create your custom management access point. I'm just putting in Pineapple Hub. Your open AP is what others are gonna be connecting to. Put in password, country, and I'm gonna keep the access points visible for now. Hit next and you can choose a blacklist or whitelist for your client filter setup. I'm gonna go ahead and keep it on the blacklist so that way everyone will be able to connect. Look and feel is totally up to you. This is basically saying that you're not gonna hack anyone without their consent. Notable terms include not violating any laws in your jurisdiction using the service, including but not limited to copyright laws, not transmitting any worms or viruses, 
or any code of a destructive nature. Also of note is that there is an age restriction saying that you may not engage with the platform if you're under 13 years of age. If you use and engage the platform between 13 and 18 years of age, you must have your parent or legal guardian's permission to do so or are classified as an adult age in your jurisdiction. The prevailing party shall be entitled to reasonable attorney's fees set by the court or by arbitration. You're not gonna be wanting to hack anybody, first because it's illegal and second, that's gonna be a lot of attorney's fees. And go ahead and accept the terms of service and license agreement and click finish. And you will see the Wi-Fi Pineapple logo. The setup is complete. Nice job guys. Make sure you connect back to your Pineapple Management AP and enter the network security key. And once you're connected, go ahead and visit the 172 address and you should see a login prompt. Once you see the login prompt, go ahead and enter the username root and the password that you put in and you should see the version and how you're going to want to connect to the internet. You can use a USB ethernet adapter, internet sharing through USB connected to your laptop or computer, or what we're going to do, which is just simply using the wireless client mode, which is connecting over Wi-Fi. You should see all of your interfaces and a routing table. Go ahead and grab your Wi-Fi Pineapple Mark 7 AC adapter. And while the Wi-Fi Pineapple is still on, go ahead and insert it into the USB A slot. And now you should see a pop up on your screen saying Wi-Fi Pineapple Mark 7 AC adapter. You've attached a compatible 802.11 AC adapter for your Wi-Fi Pineapple. You can configure Recon to scan with this adapter by selecting the adapter under the Recon Wireless Interface section in the setting. Go ahead and click Configure. If you see that it's not really loading, you can go ahead and refresh your page. And you may need to unplug the Mark 7 AC adapter, and then just plug it right back in. So you're connected to the Pineapple AP Management Hub. And now we can see that we can actually scan for different wireless interfaces using WLAN 3. Six main buttons here on the left-hand side. First is our dashboard. It shows things like our system status, how much CPU we're running, how much disk space we've used, our connected clients, and our SSIDs collected. If we click on campaign, we can see that there's no campaigns available. You can actually click the add button to start a new campaign, which will automate your Wi-Fi audit. You can name it whatever you'd like. I'm gonna do first campaign, click next. And we can do reconnaissance, monitor only, client device assessment, passive or an active client device assessment. This is using things like evil twin attacks. This will mimic all access points. Client device assessment passive will mimic only specific access points. And monitor and only will only monitor the environment around it. We're gonna go ahead and do active to mimic all of the access points. Our scan duration is going to be 30 seconds. Our active options are going to be allow associations, enable beacon responses, enable SSID broadcasting. We're gonna add SSIDs to the pool. We're gonna log the SSIDs, log associations, and log probe requests. Go ahead and hit next. We're gonna do a deny list, so only those devices that we list are going to be denied, which we're not going to list any. Go ahead and click next. Spoof networks, we're gonna do the same. All other SSID associations are accepted. You can actually have it so that this campaign will start every time we boot up the Wi-Fi pineapple. So we can actually, and we can have a frequent report of every hour. It's gonna be reporting to us. And for the format, we can either choose plain text or HTML. I'm gonna choose both and click next. Where would you like to save the reports? On the local disk, that's gonna be root to loot, just the default um, folder location. So you can go ahead and click enable email reports. We can click cloud C2 and exfiltrate campaign and it saved our campaign. Now, since this campaign is active, Every hour it's going to be sending a report and seeing what access points are available, who's connecting to this evil twin, and how much traffic we're seeing. You can pretty much just walk away at this point, it's that easy. Likewise in Pine AP, this is the tool that's going to be providing an access point where different clients are going to connect to. Right now you can whip out your phone and connect to the Wi-Fi Pineapple open access point and you would see that device show up in your connected client. Once again, the Wi-Fi Pineapple mimic any SSIDs or wireless access points that are out there right now. Recon is more for those of you who just want to get the lay of the land and look at the landscape, see what kind of SSIDs are out there and how many devices are connected to those SSIDs. Also, there just may be some free unassociated clients, which you'd see here. In our activity log, this is gonna show everyone that's connecting, anything that we've logged or any reports that are sent out. In our system logs, that's just like a regular computer system log. It's gonna show everything that's happened. We can see here that the USB ethernet was not detected, our startup operations, and setting up the Wi-Fi and flashing the firmware. In our last section, we can see modules and packages. If you're not connected to the internet, go ahead and click this three prong button here in the top right corner. Go to wireless client mode. For me, I found that the first network that popped up that said hidden was actually my network. I just had to type in the password and I was connected. You can also manually put in the network SSID and the network password. 
For some reason, it may just take a minute or two because I was just clicking around here, attempting to connect. Somehow, it asked me to sign back in. So now I guess I'm connected. Go ahead and do a scan and connect to a network. Once it said climb on connected, you can go ahead and click on modules and get available modules and check out a bunch of goodies that they have for you there. They have packages and other fun payloads which you may want to try. Here's a tool for geolocation just based on the IP address and domain names. We'll go ahead and click install. It's only 8.62 kilobytes. Module successfully installed. And now it shows up in our installed modules. We're of course going to want to install the Evil Portal, the classic captive portal for the Wi-Fi Pineapple. This one's a little bigger in size, but it's going to be a nice one to try out. There it shows up. Nmap is always helpful, so we'll install that. Floors, Traceroute, and Ping. Traceroute and Ping is a staple, so we'll go ahead and install that. And why not do some HTTPking to view plain text HTTP traffic, such as cookies and images? Sounds like a pretty fun tool. Go ahead and click install. Let's go ahead and do the MAC info because it's always useful to see information based on the MAC address. To find out the maker model just based on a MAC address. Cabinet would be good for a simple browser-based file storage system for the Wi-Fi Pineapple. Let's go ahead and get our package listings. And here you can browse the total packages, which is around 5,000, of which we have installed 224. Now, look at all the cool modules we have. Let's try one out, shall we? Let's go ahead and use our module Evil Portal. It's gonna go ahead and tell you to install dependencies on your first run, so we'll go ahead and do that. If it's been a couple minutes, it's still loading, go ahead and click the refresh page button. And now that our dependencies are installed, you should see the Evil Portal dashboard. Now grab a device like your phone and go ahead and connect to that Wi-Fi Pineapple network. So make sure when you connect to the Wi-Fi Pineapple network, you connect to the public network and not the one that you're using to manage the Wi-Fi Pineapple. For me, that was the guest Wi-Fi. We have our first connected client. It shows us the MAC address, the IP address, which we're gonna use right now. And copy that IP address, head over to your modules. So take that IP address we copied and put it in your permanent clients and click add. So to start off, we're gonna go ahead and click new portal and we're gonna do a basic portal. Click next, name your portal, whatever you want. Now, before we activate it, we're gonna go ahead and start the web server. Now that the web server started, it's going to actually catch any traffic that anyone visits on this web portal. Activate, and now we can actually see what it looks like. It's our default evil portal page, so it's obvious that this is just a test. Okay, so now that our evil portal is running, let's go ahead and check what it looks like on the phone. Now on the phone or whatever device you connected, you're gonna open up a web browser. You type in the IP address of the Pineapple router, you're gonna see that pop-up page of the evil portal. Let's be honest, that's a little bit of a mediocre portal. We want a portal that's really gonna fool people. So let's bring out the big gun. Go ahead and check out this page on GitHub, which has some really cool portals. As you can see here, we have sign-ins for Starbucks, Google, Twitter, you name it. Now this is what I'm talking about. So all you're gonna need is a Linux machine, something with a command line. For me, I'm running a VM with Ubuntu. If you don't have a Linux machine, I recommend you get a VM or dual boot your computer. But right now we're gonna use a VM, which is just as good, if not better, than dual booting. I'm running a version of Ubuntu. So now first we're gonna download the package to make sure we can get access to all those cool portals. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up a terminal. We'll do git clone, and then the URL, which is gonna be https colon slash slash github.com forward slash Clio forward slash evil portals. Press enter, cloning into evil portals, and it looks like it's done. Do a quick ls to check, and it looks like we have it right here. If you run ls evil portals forward slash portals, you can see all the different portal types that we have available. The thing is, we have to get this on our Wi-Fi pineapple. So how are we gonna do that? Well, if you open up a new terminal, we can do SSH by running SSH, the username at, and then the IP address of the Wi-Fi pineapple. Press enter, we are able to sign in with a password and now we have access to our Wi-Fi Pineapple's storage. So because it's built on Linux, we can run LS. We do in fact have a portals directory. So now we need to get the portal we downloaded onto the Pineapple. If we peek inside portals, we see that there's our basic portal. If you go back to your other terminal, we can use a little tool called SCP. SCP stands for Secure Copy Protocol. We can use it to move files around SSA. CD into the portals directory and now run SCP dash r and you can put the name of the portal you want we're going to do google login and then forward slash and also starbucks login forward slash now that we have the ones we want we do space and then the username of the pineapple at ip address of the pineapple which is going to be 
42.1. Don't forget the colon. Then the directory of the portals, which is gonna be forward slash root forward slash portals. End with a forward slash and then press enter. Now you're gonna put in your password. As we can see, it's transferred over successfully. The LS on portals, and you can see we have two new portals that are gonna be some fun. All right, now we can go back to our Wi-Fi Pineapple dashboard and simply do a refresh and we'll see that there is two new portals in our library. We can deactivate the old evil portal and go ahead and activate this Google login. When we preview it, it's gonna look a little something like this, a legitimate looking Google sign-in page. Now we'll click start and now that it's started, it's going to start tracking anything that the user puts in. So we're gonna hop on our phone. When we get on our phone, we can hit a refresh on the same IP address and it should pop up with the Google sign-in page. So I'll go ahead and put in a fake email address, guy at gmail.com. And then for the password, I just put, you ain't gonna figure this password. Now it should say this page isn't redirecting properly, which to us just makes it look like a sucky internet connection. But in reality, it actually just captured those credentials. If we go into view the log, sure enough, there it is, guy at gmail.com and password, you ain't gonna figure this password. Nice job setting up your Wi-Fi pineapple. There's a lot more fun to be had. Just for kicks, let's go ahead and try the Starbucks login to see what that looks like. Deactivate the Google login and activate the Starbucks login. So now when you get on your phone and you put in the IP address of the Wi-Fi pineapple, it's gonna show the Starbucks login page. Pretty authentic too. Now when you put in the creds, sure enough, they show up. Whitechick.com. I love my coffee. And we can actually save these files and include it in our Wi-Fi app. And there's many more fun things that you can do with this thing. Well, I hope you guys enjoy your new toy. Subscribe, give this video a thumbs up. Hey, do you want to see the Wi-Fi Pineapple in one action? Then go ahead and check out my videos here. I did wood driving episodes in Idaho Falls, Idaho, and Jackson, Wyoming. I'm Brock from Brock Card Security. Keep hustling and take care.